President Joe Biden is trying to sell off unfinished parts of Trump's border wall after Republicans claimed $300 million in taxpayer-funded components of the wall have been abandoned. Now, due to the mass waste of taxpayer dollars, the Democrat-led Senate passed the Finish It Act last month, which would force the Biden administration to use the abandoned materials to finish the wall. While the White House is hard at work to finalize the deal, Biden is secretly attempting to undercut their plans by selling the unused material uh, for pennies on the dollar. Now, Senator Tom Cotton reacted to Biden's actions by stating, leaving the border open to terrorists while selling border security materials is a loss. This is Biden economics in a nutshell. Now, on another note, Biden has decided it's finally time to pause his vacation in Lake Tahoe and take a trip to Hawaii to assess the damage of the recent wildfire. As president of the United States, you would think that Biden would have already set foot in Hawaii to show support for those affected. But this doesn't seem to be the trend for Biden. He takes vacation after vacation after vacation. In fact, he skipped East Palestine, Ohio altogether. While it's true Biden has offered $700 per household to those affected, my guess is $700 in Hawaii doesn't go very far. Now, I'd like to know from you in the community, do you think Biden should have taken not one, but two vacations since the Hawaii wildfire crisis? I mean, I hope this really opens the eyes of the people of Hawaii. This guy does not care about you, yet you overwhelmingly voted to put him in office. Now, former President Donald Trump has put an end to the speculation regarding his appearance at the upcoming Republican presidential debate this week. He cited strong poll numbers and said, the public knows who I am and what a successful presidency I had with energy independence, strong borders and military, biggest ever tax and regulation cuts, no inflation, strongest economy in history, and much more. I will therefore not be doing the debates. So now debates was plural. So could this mean he's not doing the one this week and also not doing the next one that's coming up not too far from now? I don't know. Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, has had a Hillary Clinton moment where he called MAGA voters listless vessels, right? Remember, she called people that voted for Trump a basket of deplorables. So now DeSantis is calling them listless vessels. During a new interview, Ron DeSantis claimed that Trump supporters will label anyone who doesn't kiss Trump's rear end a rhino, Republican in name only. He stated, ultimately, a movement can't be about the personality of one individual, because if you're not rooted in principle, if all we are is listless vessels that are just supposed to follow whatever happens to come down the pike on Truth Social every morning, that's not going to be a durable movement. So with comments like that, do you think Ron DeSantis has any chance of winning after insulting uh, MAGA base voters? Make America Great Voters. On the other hand, Vivek Ramaswamy said that the MAGA movement is more than just Trump. It's a great idea and bigger than just one person. What a huge difference, right? Now, a letter from Hunter Biden's attorney, Chris Clark, uh, which was obtained by Politico, and the contents within it are shocking. Uh, after discovering the Department of Justice had enough evidence to charge Hunter with a gun charge in late 2022, Clark threatened to put President Biden on the stand in order to get Hunter Biden off. Now, in his, uh, basically what it came down to is Clark suggested that the DOJ should let Hunter Biden off of this crime or threaten to put a sitting president on court in front of television cameras. Now, ironically, a plea deal was offered, but it was shot down by the judge who said, what the heck is really going on here? So basically, it's almost like Hunter's uh, lawyer was blackmailing a sitting president, and it seemed to work until a judge intervened. 
After months of asking, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has secured F-16 fighter jets from the Netherlands. He stated, Prime Minister Mark Rutte and I reached an agreement on the number of F-16s to be transferred to Ukraine once our pilots and engineers have completed their training. 42 jets, and this is just the beginning. Thank you, Netherlands. However, these F-16 jets tend to come with stipulations and are going to take a long time to get in the air because of the amount of maintenance and groundwork involved. For instance, after Denmark agreed to provide jets to Ukraine, Defense Minister Jakob Elliman Jensen stated, we donate weapons under the condition that they are used to drive the enemy out of territory of Ukraine and no further than that. Those are the conditions, whether it's tanks, fighter planes, or something else. So Denmark is trying to help, but also wants to mark a boundary, a red line, that Ukraine is not to use their jets to go into Russia and attack Moscow or St. Saint Petersburg or any part of Russia. Denmark does not want to be responsible for starting World War III through equipment that they lent to Ukraine. Now, Belarus has just announced that they will con uh, be conducting land and assault training for their troops close to the Polish border. In response to this provocation, the U.S. State Department has issued a warning for all Americans to get out of Belarus immediately. The warning also read, do not travel to Belarus due to Belarusian authorities' continued facilitation of Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine, the buildup of Russian military forces in Belarus, the arbitrary enforcement of local laws, the potential of civil unrest, the risk of detention, and the embassy's limited ability to assist U.S. citizens residing in or traveling to Belarus. So basically, they have risen the risk assessment of Belarus and the United States is now saying that they're becoming just as dangerous as Russia because they are being complicit in helping Russia. Now, sadly, on this channel, I report, I report a lot about the Russia-Ukraine war and the possibility of an upcoming U.S. war with China. Whether that war happens or not, there is a battle going on right now on who will control microchip production. One wrong move and we see a shutdown of the supply chain. This means cell phones, computers, TVs, hospital equipment, and cars and trucks, right? Well, there is another ongoing battle that most are unaware of, a battle for who will control, regulate, and dominate AI technology, artificial intelligence technology. China wants to be the global leader of AI, but so does the United States. Uh, there was a time when people said the world before the steam engine, the world before electricity, before Google, before Christ, right? This is a huge shift in history, and we're all living through it right now with artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is being developed for new medicine, surgeries, therapies, military strategy, weapons, etc. Can you imagine, uh, hey, AI, use everything you know about cancer and these chemical compounds and create a new therapy drug. And guess what? It's doing it. Uh, it's scary, but it's also incredible. It's almost like we're living in a real life black mirror or twilight zone. So there's going to be a lot of good to AI. There's gonna be a lot of scary to AI and who controls and dominates with that is, is going to change the world forever. Now, one of the global players to keep an eye on is Generative AI Solutions, ticker symbol AICOF. Now, most of you have heard of NVIDIA, either because they're hot in the news or because of the Nancy Pelosi stock trades. Well, the world will revolve around the AI chips that they create for a long time, and Generative AI Solutions has been chosen to be a part of their program. So while all these startups are fighting to uh, create the hottest new chat GPT or image creator or script writer or cartoon character, uh, all of these companies need cloud hosting to host their network on. And this is where Gen AI is already well ahead of the game. 
In fact, it reminds me of the California gold rush where thousands of people headed to California to dig their riches out of the earth. Meanwhile, it was Levi, pickaxes, shovels, and saloons that made the majority of money compared to everyone else. The CEO of Generative AI Solutions, Ryan Selby, recently sold his company for $100 million and believes this new company has even bigger potential. Uh, this group is already cash flowing, but their main goal is to scale as quickly as possible and become a dominant global player. Lastly, not only does Generative AI Solutions already have clients, but they take positions or ownership in AI companies they believe will go big based on the incredible value add in their existing business model. For example, they took a healthy position in a medical billing collection platform named Remitz. Remitz uses AI to make medical billing and collection easier and more lucrative for the medical space. So by owning generative AI solutions, you get access to a portfolio of AI companies that are doing well, kind of like a mini ETF within a company. On top of that, you have an AI cloud platform uh, that has the ability to bring in hundreds of small AI companies while they battle it out for who will become the next Google or the next Amazon or the next big player. Uh, just an incredible company and wanted to bring this uh, to your attention. Again, their ticker symbol is AICOF and they can be found on most major trading platforms. Make sure to check them out and do your own research. I wanna thank Generative AI Solutions for partnering with me on this video and bringing this information to my community's attention. Now, before you go, I wanna remind you that you are amazing. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out these important uh, videos because you won't wanna miss them. Hey, thanks so much, and I will see you on the next video.